Hello, Instagram. What's up, Facebook? I'm being very slow to connect tonight, so hopefully my connection's good and you guys can hear me. I apologize in advance if the audio cuts out tonight. Hello, Case Candy from Instagram. I'm on Facebook and Instagram Live, so if I'm looking back and forth between two cameras, that's what's going on. Thank you guys so much for joining. Happy Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week. Hi, Tammy from Pennsylvania. I have a new mic set up tonight that I'm trying, so um, if you guys can't hear me, let me know. I'm trying to have it hanging in front of my face versus sitting in front of me because I bump into it too much. So I'm hoping that might help with some of the audio cutting out, but ultimately I think it's my internet or Facebook Live. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. Hi, Debbie from Idaho. Thank you guys so much. I have a lot to discuss. I, uh, your time is important to me, so I don't want to keep you guys all night. So we will jump right in. Hi, Debbie from North Carolina. We've got a lot of Debbies. That's my mom's name. Hi, Jeannie from, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, Jean or Jeannie from Pennsylvania. Welcome. Everybody on Facebook. Aloha. All right, you guys. So we are a week into the China compromise, illegitimate Joe Biden dictatorship that is currently occupying the White House, hopefully temporarily. Uh, wow. Um, I, last I read, he is up to 37 executive orders. And I think that was before, um, I think that was before today. I think he signed more today. So I don't know how many we're sitting at right now, but he is definitely, um, on the dictatorship, uh, path. And I posted a video earlier today on my Facebook of him talking about working with Congress and needing signatures to get things passed. And he's talking about, you know, if you sign a lot of executive orders, you're a dictator. Well, that's exactly what he's doing. So by his own definition, he is, and his press secretary, I don't even know how to say her last name. Saki, I don't know, has a P. I think the P is silent. She is terrible. Uh, Kaylee, every time Kaylee went to that podium, hi, Rachel on Instagram. Every time Kaylee went to that podium, she was prepared. She had that huge binder with all the tabs in it from all the different topics. This woman has no idea what she's talking about. Every single thing they ask her is, let me circle back to you. Let me circle back to you. They're actually, there's someone made a compilation video of every time that she's saying, let me circle back to you. And it's actually pretty funny. It made me laugh because, you know, uh, I, I related it to the uh, illegitimate dictator Biden was having his campaign rallies. Um, they would have like two people. I think they were like paid media people or whatever. And they would put like the big, beautiful circles. I feel like them in circles, like have a thing. Like, let me circle back to you. I don't know if she's actually circled back on any of those things that she keeps saying she's going to circle about back on. But that woman is the least prepared press secretary, uh, at least between Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Kaylee and this woman. I don't know what trash heap they drug her off of, but I miss Kaylee. I'm sure you guys do too. Kaylee was awesome. She was our savage queen. And this one, not so much. Let's see. Also, to the dictator, have you guys seen the video? I think I posted it yesterday. I'm not sure if I could find the right format for Facebook of uh, illegitimate dictator Biden. He's just signing the executive orders away, and then he literally says to like out loud. If you turn the volume up, you can hear it. He literally says, "I have no idea what I'm signing, or I don't know what I'm signing," and then he just signs it anyway. Like, what is going on, you guys? It's so clear that this man. First of all, if you watch him for more than 15 seconds, he has no idea what he's doing. Like I call his face, like he looks almost, he looks like he's always, hi Jessica. He looks like he's always saying like, like he looks confused and like somewhat pained. Like he's always saying like, I think I just soiled my depends. Like just that look that he has in every single picture. And it's sad because I had a, my grandfather died of a dementia related illness. Right. And that's the same, um, look and actions that uh, illegitimate dictator Biden has. It's actually, if he wasn't such a disgusting person and a criminal, I would actually feel bad for him because what they're doing to him is clearly elder abuse. There are definitely shadow government 
behind the scenes pushing an agenda and he's the one he's the workhorse doing all the work and you know they they are quickly trying to undo every single thing president trump did right like he hasn't from what um congresswoman lauren bobert said he hi denise he hasn't even worked with congress like they sent uh have the house home like i think for this whole week and maybe next week because he's just signing executive orders away just signing 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 they are in such a rush to do to undo every single thing president trump did that benefited the american people why are they in such a hurry right if they honestly think that they won legitimately if they honestly think that um, why are they in such a rush, right? They're, they supposedly have four years, according to what they're telling people. Why are they in such a rush to undo every single thing President Trump did that benefited the American people? Like, what is the hurry? Why does he need to sign 37 plus executive orders like on the, in the first week? It's actual comedy. And the fact that his, uh, supporters, and I don't think he really has supporters, uh, it's just people who have been conditioned to hate Trump. They called Trump the dictator, right? He signed more executive orders than like uh, a Trump, Obama, and um, like Bush combined, like and probably Clinton too, like in the first week. I, this is unprecedented how many executive orders this man is signing. And he does not know what he's signing. This man is a puppet to people, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, about the bigger uh, powers that be that are actually in control and running the show in regards to the fake news media. But in regards to this too, uh, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's clear the man is not uh, mentally fit. And I'm, I'm wondering if how long it's going to take fake, illegitimate Kamala Harris to 25th Amendment him, because I see that happening. If you remember when Trump uh, spoke at the wall, President Trump, he said the 25th Amendment is a lot bigger threat to the than it is to me. It's no threat to him. Uh, President Trump said that when Nancy was originally talking about it. So I'm wondering, what do you guys think? How, how long do you think it'll take before they get him out of there and try to put Kamala in? Um, I would honestly rather have illegitimate uh, dictator Biden than her because it, he... Either way, they're both a puppet, I guess. She's just fake, and I can't stand her laugh. Both of them are America last. They're, doing, they're not doing one single thing to benefit the American people. Every single thing they're doing is America last. They're undoing all the America first policies of President Trump, and every single thing puts their donors, their special interests, their lobbyists, their friends in other countries. China puts all those people, um, it benefits all those people, and it, it does not benefit the American people. So his build back better, um, he is building back better, but for China and his friends, definitely not for the American people. And people are starting to realize that one of the top trends on Google searches is uh, reg regretting voting for Biden. That's one of the top trends on Google searches. I was reading that before I came online, you guys. People are having buyer's remorse. The media condition, and we're going we're gonna to hit the media head on tonight, and I'm going to tell you guys some stuff you may or may not know about the fake news. Media condition people to hate President Trump so much based on lies and no evidence. They edited clips together of him. Um, they convinced a large part of the nation to hate him and all of his supporters based on lies, right? Total falsities and lies. And they got people so brainwashed into thinking, oh, I need to vote for Biden because Trump sends mean tweets and Biden's a likable guy. That's... I would rather have someone who sends mean tweets than someone who lies to the American people eloquent, eloquently. Obama was eloquent and lied to our faces. Um, President Trump was honest and, you know, he said the things that we all wanted to say and he had no filter and he sent mean tweets, depending on who you're talking to, and they convinced people that that was reason enough to get rid of the man. Uh, when in reality, he was the thing that was standing between them and us, right? Because we know they're coming after us. They want to control the American people. If the American people actually control the government like it's supposed to be, uh, they don't benefit from that, right? They need to be stealing from us. They need to be ripping us off. There's no benefit for them if the American people are actually running things the way the Constitution meant it to be. That's why they didn't like President because everything he did put the American people at the forefront and put America first instead of all their buddies in China, 
pharma and all these other big banks, all these other industries that have taken advantage of us, President Trump stood between us and them. And that's why I didn't like him. That's why, also why they hate us, because we see the truth now. And President Trump uh, shared information with us that woke us up. And they don't want us to be awake. They want that control over us. They want to be able to line their pockets with our money and rip us off and continue to lie to us. And we're awake now. So they hate that. They hate that they don't have that control over us anymore. And that's why they're still going after us. Right? Uh, let's see. Let's talk about some news updates. We'll get into that in a minute. I'm getting the cart before the horse here. So some great things that have happened. Sarah Huckabee Sanders announced, I believe it was yesterday, she is running for governor of Arkansas. That's awesome. She, President Trump came out with his uh, new America First, or I'm sorry, no, not America First, Save America logo, and gave her his full endorsement. No surprise there. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is awesome. I fully support her for governor of Arkansas. I think she'll do a fantastic job. One thing I will say is we need to get our election system fixed before then because we have some great candidates running. But if we don't fix our election system and get rid of the fraud and get some voter ID and election integrity, it's kind of pointless for these great people to run because they're not going to win. They're just going to steal the election again. So hopefully that gets fixed um, because we still need to go back and fix 2020. We, we can't just keep moving forward and pretending like everything's okay because, oh, we'll focus on 22. We have to fix 2020. There's no point in going any further until the fraud that happened is exposed and fixed. And those responsible who committed treason and high crimes against our country are brought to justice. We, the American people, need to fight for this. I posted some information, I believe it was yesterday, from Scott Pressler. Great information on how you can go onto a website and contact your state legislature about proposing bills that actually fix uh, the integrity of our elections and improve that. So look for that on the page because it's very important that we, the people, speak up and don't allow this to happen, right? We have to, we have to do our part. We can't sit back quietly. They're just going to keep stealing elections from us like they've been doing most likely for decades. Anyway, Sarah Sanders announced she's running for governor. She has my full uh, support. I love that woman. I thought she did a fantastic job as press secretary. Comes from a great family. So if you live in Arkansas, you will get the chance to vote for her. Hopefully our elections will be fixed, and I definitely believe that she will win. Um, COVID-19 news. So Dr. Fauci, not a big fan of him. He pretty much admitted that masks don't work when he came out and said, uh, now you need two, maybe three masks. Now, if masks work, like they've been telling us um, they have, which they don't, but if they do, according to what they're saying, why then would we need to wear two or three, right? Why? If they work, and they've been telling us this whole time they work with zero scientific evidence to back that up, zero. There's zero data to back that up. Actually, the places with the strict, most strict mandates, their numbers, actually, their case numbers actually went up after imposing the mandates. You can check that yourself, and I recommend you do it. But now they're saying two to three masks, you guys. I see people walking around with double mask. I haven't seen the triple mask yet, but I have seen the double mask with the ridiculous face shield. People are so gullible and they will believe any single thing they're told because someone tells them they need to be scared and this is how to fix your fear. And people will fall in line and do whatever it is they're being told because people are sheep. People are easily brainwashed because they don't do their own research. Um, they also came out and said they want to start doing COVID testing by swabbing in the anus. <laughs> I think it would be really interesting, right? Because people are going to do this, you guys. People are going to be just like they lined up for the vaccine, the mask, you know, multiple masks, whatever, the face shield. People are going to be lining up in masks to get this butt swab COVID test. I think a line at like CVS or something of people waiting to get that test. How is that going to work? right? Because now you just sit in the car and you stick the thing up to your brain. People, the lines to get the COVID test in your anus, that is, I honestly feel like at this point, they're just seeing how far they can get people to go. And it's a huge joke, right? Like they're playing a joke just to see how much control people will actually give them and how much stupidity people will actually buy into. And people, trust me, there are people who watch this stream and who comment ridiculous things that will be first in line to get that COVID butt test with their three masks on. 
it's literally a comedy show at this point, how ridiculous it is and how much they're lying. And the sad thing is you get to a point where you can't even so much blame the news anymore because people are doing it. You have to blame the people who are gullible and who are falling for it. Like I was telling uh, my friend today, we were walking on the grocery store with no mask. Everyone in there had a mask, but us. I'm like, we are a year into this pandemic, uh, a little, almost a year. People are walking around wearing masks. And think about this for a second, people. They started, and I'm sure they do it in your towns too, when they started our whole mask mandate, they started this whole propaganda ad campaign here in Chattanooga with billboards and radio ads and people on billboards with a mask and it says mask up chas, C-H-A, with a hashtag. They're totally trying to sell people on it. If we're actually in a pandemic, you wouldn't need propaganda to convince people of that, right? We would be dying in mass. We would be dying in the streets. If you're actually in a pandemic, people would know. You wouldn't need a, a radio ad to tell you, hey, we're in a pandemic. You should probably do something about it. But the thing is, if masks ash- if mask actually work and we're preventing people from getting sick, you also wouldn't have to have a fancy ad campaign to tell people that. People would know because it would be working. But when you have no evidence and no data to back up your claims, they get people with marketing, right? They try to make it trendy. They have celebrities. I'm going to talk about this in a second too. They have celebrities pushing it. They have the mayor pushing it. Everyone's saying the same thing, the same narrative. If it actually worked, you wouldn't need the propaganda. It would just be working, right? But people are so gullible and they continue to fall. And then they say that we're the crazy people for not. We're the crazy people for asking questions, for not conforming, for not complying, for for breathing. Uh, you know, those masks, you get bacteria in it from wearing it all day and that goes into your lungs and that can cause pneumonia and it has in people, but the doctors don't tell you that side of it because that doesn't allow them to control you. Some true doctors are actually speaking the truth, but notice that the media doesn't talk to them or they shut them down and try to make them look crazy. Another thing I thought was interesting is the, let me make sure I say this right. It's a hard word. Hydroxychloroquine. President Trump came out and said he was taking that as a preventative measure, all the doctors, I mean, it's been around for like 65 years, right? All of a sudden the doctors weren't allowed to said he was saying, put bleach in your throat, all this ridiculous stuff. It's a horrible medicine. They were on this all out attack against anyone who said hydroxychloroquine was good for you. Two days after illegitimate dictator Biden is sworn in, all of a sudden now doctors are allowed to prescribe it. And it is something that can help COVID. What changed? What is changing here? Same thing with the lockdowns. Gavin Newsom and other Democrat governors suddenly two days after the installment of this uh, dictatorship and regime. Now they're saying, oh, we're, we can open up. If you look at the numbers and the data, nothing is dramatically changing. But they don't want people to do that, you guys. How is it that just two days after this dictator is installed into the White House, all of a sudden businesses can open, right? They've destroyed people's lives for an entire year, right? How is it? These are the questions people should be asking. What changed? What's the science behind this? Where is it? Look for it yourself. There's no major data that supports this. There's absolutely none. They've lied to the American people for political gain for for almost a year now. And all of a sudden now that they wanna make their dictator look good, all of a sudden things are changing. And another thing I read that was interesting, I, I don't, maybe it was Reuters or I don't remember exactly the source. I actually read on a couple different things. Uh, Gavin Newsom, among other Democrat governors, was saying he's not going to be releasing the data that they use to justify the lockdowns because it's too complicated for the American people to understand. Okay, two things, two points I want to make. Either he's saying you are too stupid to understand it yourself, or he's hiding something. All that information, if you lock down people's businesses, lock down schools, cause them to lose their life savings and their businesses and everything they've worked for, they need to know why. People need to justify why this happened. And if that information is being held from them, there's only two possibilities. And when you come out and you say it's too complicated, you're either saying the American people are too stupid or you're hiding something and there's not data to justify it. I'm going to say the the latter part. They don't think um, 
they don't think that we're smart enough to research for ourselves and that's what they're hoping and we have been and those people that have been are awake to the truth don't like that so they don't want us to see the information that's there because my guess is there's no data to support that that's my guess doesn't make sense I've yet to see data to support that we're even in a pandemic, if you want to know the truth. If you go on the CDC website, and I'm not saying the virus isn't real. I understand the virus is real. But if you go on the CDC website and you do some basic division and multiplication with their numbers versus death uh, number percentages, you do that into a percentage, nothing in there says pandemic. It's like the death rate in the whole United States compared to the population, which I know changes by the second because of births and deaths but let's just say 330 million, it's like 0.0001 or something like that. Not, not even, way less than 1% of the population has passed away from this. But this is the thing. They, the fake news, depend on the American people not doing their own research. They want to scare us with this ticker that says, uh, this many people died today. Now, and now they went from deaths, when deaths dropped dramatically, they went to case numbers. They want to keep us in fear of people getting cases. Well, people who are getting cases are uh, pretty much everyone I know has had COVID and they're all fine. Right? I understand people have passed away from it. My heart goes out to them. But if you look, the majority of those people had other underlying conditions, but uh, that caused it, right? So if they would have got pneumonia or the flu or anything, they would have passed away. But people don't do their own research. And those of us who do, we're labeled conspiracy theorists, right? Everything's a conspiracy theory. Uh everything, right? If you want to talk about conspiracy theories, um, let's talk about the Russia hoax. So let's talk about, let's talk about, um, president Trump inciting an insurrection, not what Chuck Schumer said. Um, because there's no evidence to back up any of that. They lie to the American people. That's a conspiracy theory. When you lie and you tell lies on somebody or an entire group of people and you conspire to take them down or make them look bad and you present no evidence to back up your claims ample evidence that Trump colluded with Russia. We never saw it. Three years of investigations, hundreds of millions of dollars, that evidence was never shown because it doesn't exist. That's a conspiracy theory. But notice that they're not fact-checking that. They're not... ...conspiracy theorists. It's all a mind game that they try to play. Speaking of that, uh, Brandon Straka... I think it's actually struck and the A is silent, uh, was arrested this week for incidents relating to the events that took place at the U.S. Capitol on January the 6th. Now, I was, I did, um, I actually didn't see him in D.C. that day. I know he was there because I saw him back on Right Side Broadcasting. So I was not next to Brian at the Capitol, um, to, to Brandon. I was not next to Brandon at the Capitol when whatever supposedly happened, happened. I did see the video that they are allegedly using for their evidence. Based on what I see in that video, I don't see that the man did anything wrong. He never entered the Capitol. He was in FBI custody. I believe he's been released. And I just want to shout out on this platform. I want to use this platform to elevate truth and to elevate fighters and people who are doing their job. I have so much respect for Brandon Strzok and his team. I know a lot of people have different opinions on his personality, whatever. I don't care about all that. I've met the guy... He's a great guy. He was nothing but nice to me. I have seen him do the work that no one else wants to do. When we were all at home enjoying our lives and the Senate race in Georgia was coming up, him and his team were down there knocking on doors, making phone calls, handing out flyers, and working to get those two Republican senators elected, even though Brandon admitted Kelly Loeffler, and I agree, was not the best candidate. They were working at all the pro-Trump uh, stop the steal, whatever protest events I went to, he was there. He flew all around the country working. He worked and went to the states that no one else wanted to go to, the states that he was needed the most. He met people, he registered voters, he knocked on people's doors. That man has worked his tail off for President Trump and not just President Trump, but for our freedom in general and for our country. And I have so much respect for him. Um, I have so much respect for him and it really... I, I see this as an attack, and I say that because prior to his arrest, they completely deplatformed him. He is the reason that so, and probably some of you watching from the Democrat Party, he, his story, you should hear it from him. He woke up because he realized 
when he would watch President Trump say something, a speech or whatever, and then he'd go and watch it on the fake news, what they were, rep what they were saying happened was exact opposite of what he saw. They were lying to him. The fake news woke him up. And the, you know they don't like that. They don't like people who expose them or who counter their narrative. And so this is, they've been all out attack. They completely deplatformed him. Everyone on his team, his walk away campaign, uh, had over 500,000 members, people sharing their story of why they walked away from the Democrat party. And they completely deplatformed him. They even took away his ability to email people on his mailing list, right? He, he lost all of those contacts. They took all of that completely away from him. And then they went and arrested him. I believe this is an attack to shut him up. And Brandon, if you are any person on your team or watching this, I want you to know that you are always welcome on my platform. I am praying for you. I believe that this is all going to be fine. You will be vindicated because I believe that they are making a bigger deal than what it was. And I respect you so much. And the people on this channel respect you. We love you. I see your hard work. Uh, I see where your heart is and I am praying that everything works out for you and I have your back. So anything you need, you give me a call, get in contact with me. Um, another person that the media is, uh, attacking and I'm, I gotta have, I gotta have our Patriot families back you guys, because, uh, one thing I can say about conservatives is we need to stick together more. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to have each other's back. We've got to stick up for each other. Uh, the Democrats, they're a mean pack of wolves, but they stick together. And we need more of that from the conservatives. Another person that is being attacked, and I sent her a link. I don't know if she's watching. I probably highly doubt she isn't. If anyone is watching this that knows her, because she doesn't live far from me. If anyone's watching this that knows Marjorie Green, please send this message to her. They, The media is in an all-out war on her today. CNN started it. They're going back and they are pulling up posts that she made from 2015, 2016. They're in a full on attack trying to take her down. Now we know those people, the fake news, the media, celebrities, politicians, they only attack people that are speaking truth. If you weren't, if we weren't speaking truth and doing something right, they wouldn't care what she was saying. If the information that she shared wasn't true, they, they would not care about anything she was saying or doing, but those that are the strongest warriors and those that pose the biggest threats are the ones that they try to take down and the ones that they try to attack. And I also would like to say, based on what I saw that they're attacking her for, none of that information that she was talking about has been debunked. I just want to put that out there, right? If everything that she said is such a crazy conspiracy theory, what are they so afraid of? Why? Why are there only, you know, there's been conspiracy theories that have been floating around for decades before I was born. Uh, dead set on attacking the one that exposes their deep and corrupt crimes. And that has yet to be debunked. So since they can't debunk it, they attack those who do the research and who speak the truth and they do their best to make them look crazy, to make them look deranged. Even Hillary Clinton came out and said, this woman needs to be on a watch list to which Marjorie Green responded and said, Actually, you need to be in jail. And she put a, a, a meme saying that in the debates in 2016. I thought that was a savage response. Uh, but Marjorie Green, if you're watching this, you are always welcome on this platform. This platform, myself, I support you 150%. Uh, I actually think instead of toning your rhetoric down, you should actually ramp it up. Because we need more fighters. We need people who are not afraid to stand up against the lies, who are not afraid to speak truth. You are all, I would love to have you on here. Um, if, if we can get together and, and do an interview, I would love to share your message and, and let people on this platform hear what you have to say, but you're always welcome here. I have your back. I will, I will keep fighting for you as long as you keep fighting for us. So again, uh, Marjorie Green, I, I fully, fully, fully support you. I don't care what the fake news says about you. If you're watching this and you know her, please make sure that she sees that. I would love to work closely with her. Um, I like working with people who are strong, who are fighters, and who are not afraid to speak the truth. We've got to stick together. We've got to support uh, the conservatives if they're fighting, you guys. They only fight the people who are a threat to them. And the reason they're a threat to them is because we, those of us who speak truth, they don't like President Trump because he was a threat to their political establishment. He called them out. He exposed the fake news. He exposed their corruption. He exposed their lies. 
That's why they hate him so much. That's why they're still trying to impeach the man when he's no longer in office, right? They, they rushed through this impeachment with, he didn't even have attorneys present, no trial, nothing. They only do that when they're scared of somebody. They're not doing that because he's a criminal, right? Because there's no evidence of that. If there was, we would have seen it over the past four years. They're doing it because they're scared. And I want to talk to you guys about that, about the fake news. Do you guys know, I'm going to drop some education. Hopefully the audio does not cut out right now because I know it does that. And I apologize. I am working on upgrading to a better program. Did you guys know that there are six major corporations that own the media that we consume. 90% of the media we consume is owned by six major corporations. I have the list. GE, Disney, Viacom, News Corp, Time Warner, and CBS. Now that list is a couple years old. So if there was a merger, it could be a name by a different company now, but that's not the point. The point is six major companies own the 90% of the media we consume. Six. Now, as a side note, we won't get into this, but you should also look into how many major companies own our food supply and the food distribution companies. There's like eight or nine. So we have the illusion of choice, right? We have the illusion that we have a choice of what we consume into our minds and into our bodies. But in reality, we don't because they're all, all these brands are controlled by the same people at the top. See, the news isn't going to tell you this. When all of the news, so like the attack on Marjorie Green. When all the news is saying the same things and they use the same keywords, right? That's because they're given talking points. That's the narrative that they are told and they're controlled to share. All owned by the same people, right? Corrupt people at the top would use that, use their media power to pass on this message through TV shows, through uh, movies, music, all of it. All of it's controlled by corrupt people at the top who, who own these six companies. And I want to, I want you guys to think about this too. Celebrities, uh, movie stars, singers, actors, whoever, they sign contracts with these people and they are just like the news stations that you're watching. So when you see the celebrities speaking out and saying the same narrative that the mainstream media is telling you, they are controlled and they are forced to say these things as well, right? Uh, when singers and, and, and actors and actresses sign their contracts, a lot of time in there, it says you have to support whatever political candidate we tell you. You have to take a stand for the political ideas that we tell you. They literally sell their soul and their life away to these people that fully control them. And I know you guys probably think I'm wearing my tinfoil hat right now. Do your own research. Everything I'm saying is truth. That's why it seems like, oh, all these celebrities, you know, they're all liberal. Not so much. A lot of them are because they're brainwashed and they're mind controlled, but a lot of them are fully controlled. Look at the, the lead singer of the Bad Wolves, the heavy uh, metal band. T uh, Tommy Vex is his name. Look him up on social media. He came out and made a video with the markers. I don't know if you guys saw it a few months ago and he exposed Epstein and Hillary and all these people. And then he came back and apologized for it because he was attacked from within, from the record company and from the people that controlled him and the powers that be and they forced him to apologize well then since then he has taken a step back and said you know what i'm a patriot i'm not going to stand for this stuff no matter what and so now he's lost everything he lost his ban he lost it all because he spoke truth and now he's still speaking speaking truth because he realizes truth is more important so he's now struck out on his own because he is he decided to speak out and he decided to go against their narrative uh, they will actually, uh, it's a lot. The only way to get past their narrative sometimes is it doesn't end well for you. Let's just, let's just put it that way. So when you're talking and people think we're crazy for saying the fake news and the fake news lies, you guys, it, you have to be, if you have any common sense at all, you have to know with that much money comes power with that much power comes control. They can't have people with millions of followers being pro-Trump, right? Because they hate Trump. We have to hate Trump, according to them. So they control that. The news that we're watching when they're all saying the same thing, for example, they're all out attack on Marjorie Greene right now. When every news company is saying the same thing, that's because they got their talking points and that's the narrative that they're trying to push. The same anti-Trump narrative, the same Russia hoax, the same Ukraine crap, the same... 
I don't know what else, Stormy Daniels. And now uh, the whole thing with Trump supposedly inciting an insurrection. Um, not the other thing that Chuck Schumer said, which I think is hilarious. Notice that they're not showing evidence of Trump actually doing that because it doesn't exist. Very part, you guys. This is something that's really been bothering me. The fake news media has so much control over people. And some of you watching this, and I, I know they do because I can see the comments that you leave on my video. They have so much control over people. They've actually conditioned people to believe what they're being told over what they're actually seeing with their own eyes. Right? So I can post a video of, of for example, of the soldiers, the military, the uh, National Guard in Trump Tower. And some of you still go on and comment and say, this is not legit. This doesn't sound like Trump because they've conditioned you to hate everything. That's truth. Everything that's anti their narrative or counters their lies. They've conditioned you to believe it's not true. They have conditioned you to believe that Trump incited an insurrection, even though the video that I posted from the speech that I was at, where he's saying peacefully and patriotically, let your voices be heard and walk to the Capitol, even though there's zero evidence of him inciting an uh, insurrection, you are conditioned to believe without seeing evidence. So they've convinced people to believe what they tell them over what they're actually seeing and the actual evidence with their own eyes. You guys, that's some crazy mind control. That's the uh, power that they have over our minds. These people cannot be trusted. That's why companies like Right Side Broadcasting have done so fantastic. Why is that? Because when they go to the Trump rallies, uh, they actually show the entire speech, right? Because they believe that the American people are smart enough based on what is actually said. If you watch the other networks, they will cut out when Trump's doing a press conference, when Kaylee's doing a press conference. Um, I've actually seen, I mean, Fox and all of them, they'll cut out and do their own commentary and tell you what they're saying instead of just letting you listen to what's being said. Why is that? They want you to be so dumbed down and so brainwashed and believe what they're telling you over the actual facts. I challenge you guys, go back and look at the press conferences that Kaylee and President Trump did about COVID. Go back, watch the actual press conferences and the actual Trump's actual rally speeches and whatever speech they said, Trump said this, that, and the other, even the thing like when South Carolina, when they said he said very fine people and they called him a racist, go back and watch his actual speech. It's very different than what they're telling you. He said, if you watch his actual speeches and then watch the news coverage of it, what they're going to tell you is pretty much complete opposite of what actually happened. And I, I witnessed this for myself, right? I believed President Trump when he said the news was fake because I have done research and know that we've been lied to. When they did the whole impeachment thing, the first one over the Ukraine call, and Adam Schiff had the, the fake transcript, transcript of what Trump supposedly said, I had read the actual transcript that Trump released from his third party people that were on the call and actually did the transcript. I had just read that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to see for myself just how bad it is or if it's bad at all. So I went on and I watched the clip of what Adam Schiff was saying President Trump supposedly said. It was nothing like what was actually said. Like I knew it was bad, but when I watched that, I was like, holy moly, this is not even the same, right? And that's how they brainwash people because they, they want to keep us to a point where we trust them and we don't do our own research. And so we believe they, they, they want to success, successfully condition us to believe what they are telling us over what we actually see. So I'll put a video on for destroying a city. People will actually tell me that's not true, right? That Trump incited the insurrection, but there's no evidence. You're looking at evidence of Antifa destroying a city and you're telling me this is true that Trump incited an insurrection. So you're believing what you're being told, right? Because the Democrats said Antifa is a myth and an idea and the riots didn't happen over the summer. And people believe that even though there's ample video evidence that proved that it happened, right? And I've shared some of it on my page, but people will actually sit there and say, this isn't happening. And then say President Trump incited an insurrection when he never did such a thing. 
if he did, where's the evidence? Why isn't the news showing the evidence of him actually doing that? Because it doesn't exist. The Russia hoax evidence does not exist. The Ukraine evidence does not exist. Uh, everything that they're attacking President Trump with, they the whole thing with COVID and the mask, oh, mask work. Where's the evidence? Where is the data that shows when places mandated mask, the numbers dramatically dropped? Show me that evidence because it doesn't, I've searched. I've searched all over the CDC website. I've searched state uh, websites with state. I've, here in Tennessee, I've searched our numbers after they put our county on a mandatory mask mandate. It doesn't exist. Our numbers actually went up. But people don't look at this, right? And then they say, I'm the crazy one. I got banned from the Hamilton County Health Department. I can't post on their Facebook because I dare break down the actual math that shows the numbers they were telling us were a lie. And it's like division, you guys. It's not like it's algebraic equations. Um, I think we need to really think about this, right? We, if we actually want truth, if we actually want truth, we need to be doing research on ourselves. You should, even myself, you should never trust what someone is telling you as gospel. Trust but verify. You need to do your own research. Um, see for yourself. Don't let me tell, don't get your news from me. Don't get your news from channels. I don't care how much we trust the people. Verify what they're saying. If you actually verify the truth versus the lies, it's going to be very easy what the truth is because it's very obvious. There's video evidence right now that proves uh, President Trump didn't incite an insurrection. But you have to, and that's the thing. Some people are so brainwashed with hate and with lies and with false narratives, they're not willing to see it because that would mean admitting that you were wrong. That would mean the family and the friends that you dropped and cut out of your life because they supported a terrorist, you were wrong in that. And you would have to admit that. And that would require change in admitting you're wrong. People don't want to do that. And that's too bad because the truth, uh, that's why I have this broadcast, you guys. It's important. It, the, like the Bible says, the truth will set you free. The truth is important. I don't care about narratives. I want to know the truth. That, that's honestly why I read, this is a small example, but I've been reading that Kaylee has signed on to work for Fox. I haven't posted that yet. Why? Because I haven't heard it from her. And I don't want to lead you guys astray. And I don't want you guys thinking, uh, you know, that I have no credibility because I'm posting things that aren't true. When I hear Kaylee announce it, I'll post it. Because I care about the truth and I care about sharing it's that important, right? I am not doing this for myself. I'm not doing this to push a narrative. The only narrative I'm pushing here is truth. Anything I say, please go research it. Don't take my word for it. Go do your due diligence and research the things I am telling you. I beg you because you will find that you've been lied to and not by me, right? You will find that. But people don't do their own research. They watch the news and then they come on and they say, we are conspiracy theorists and we, the information that we share is baseless and that could not be further than the truth. Do your research. You'll, you'll see the truth there. It's sad how brainwashed, uh, I mean, when you, when you can, when you're so powerful that you can actually get people to believe what you're telling them versus what is actually being seen by their own eyes, that's some, some crazy power. And I think that we all need to be aware of the news that's lying to us. And just because politicians and celebrities are agreeing with the talking points doesn't mean, doesn't make it true, right? I mean, you know, a, a million people can go and tell you that I'm a man, but when I'm actually a woman, that doesn't mean what they're saying is true. You can say Ashley's a man all day long. And some of you say that I am in my comments and you say horrible things about the way I look. But that doesn't make it true. Right. You can also go and tell people I still live in California and the whole country could go and say that I don't, I live in Tennessee. doesn't make it true. Hopefully you never are put in a position where people lie on you and people believe it without evidence because that's a very hurtful feeling. And so I think we all need to think about what we're consuming. We need to really do our due diligence, find out where this information is coming from, verify the news that you're receiving. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's right side broadcasting, Fox, CNN, we need to be verifying what we're being told. If it's my broadcast, uh, I don't know who all you guys watch. A lot of you guys watch the alien lover, Simon Parks. You need to be verifying what he tells you. Don't just take it, his word for it. Don't take my word for it. Go look up the things I'm telling you. When I tell you that six corporations own 90% of the media we're consuming, you should be going to verify that. 
And by the way, a Google search is not a legitimate way to research. You need to actually do research. Google hides things and they manipulate the searches. That's another thing. The same people that control all these media companies, they also control the search engines and they also control the fact checkers. Who fact checks the fact checkers, right? Think about that power, that amount of power. You can control an entire world with false narratives when you have that kind of power. And so I challenge you guys to do your own due diligence. Don't believe narratives that are told to you. Don't believe it's important. They will try to destroy people's lives. They're trying to destroy Brandon Strzok. They're trying to destroy Marjorie Green. Uh, they will do their best to try and destroy these great people based off of a narrative. And people just read an article and that's what they go with. Oh, okay, Brandon did this. Were you there? I wasn't there. I can't tell you for sure what he did. N no one knows unless you were actually there with him. Based on the video I saw, I've told you the conclusions I've come to. But we cannot, we can't keep chasing these false news narratives, you guys. We've got, we've got to wake up to it. We have to realize we should start questioning things. If we're being told to hate an entire community of people because of who they voted for, we should probably be checking into why we're being told that, right? There's more than just meets the eye there. I mean, common sense will tell you that. I could go on about this all night. I'm not going to, but I do want to end with a scripture. I may have read this on a live broadcast before. Um, if I did, we're going to hear it again because I think it's valid. It has a lot to do with the evil that we are dealing with in our world, uh, especially through the, the media and entertainment and fake news media. This is Ephesians 6 and 12 through 13 from the New Living Translation. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world and spirits in the heavenly places in high places therefore this is my favorite part there put on every piece of god's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil then after the battle you will still be standing firm. We are not just in a battle of Democrat versus Republican. It's not Trump versus Biden. The media, it's not white versus black. The media wants us to think that it's not gay versus straight. It's not religious versus atheist. The media wants us to think that we are in a battle between good and evil. Like never, we have to put on the armor of God. We have to fast. We have. To we cannot be sheep and let these people control us. If they control, whatever controls your mind controls your life. We have to take back control of that, you guys. We need to control God control what we consume and what goes in and out of our mind. Because if we let their lies and false narratives control us. We will begin to hate each other. We'll be divided. They want us divided in every way possible cannot win against the united country united we stand scares them that's why they keep the race thing going that's why they keep uh, religion versus atheist going gay versus straight man versus woman they want to destroy the american family they want us divided if we are divided they can control us if we rise up and we realize that we have been used by these people they cannot control us that's why they're afraid of those of us who speak out and that's why they attack us and they do everything they can to discredit us, to discredit us and diminish our, our, our reputation because they want to scare people into submission. They want to scare people into rising up against them. We cannot allow that to happen. I hope what I do here inspires you guys to speak up and to be loud and, and to question the narrative, question everything. I'm not telling you to believe what I say. I'm telling you to question it. I'm telling you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions, guys. We can't let them continue to divide us. Our freedom is too important. We need to unite. And I'm not talking about the Biden unity where they, they want you to conform. I want people to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. We don't have to agree to love each other, right? We don't have to insult each other just because we don't agree. And I, I'm preaching now. I don't want to get off into this tangent. But put on the armor of God. Realize what we're fighting here. The battle is not. God's. We are not each other's enemy. Satan is our enemy. We're fighting uh, uh, evil, evil spirits 
So we have to stay focused. And I, I thank you guys for watching tonight. Sorry, I went a little longer than normal, but I'm passionate about this topic. The entire reason I'm here is thanks, Denise, for watching on Instagram. The entire reason I'm here is to combat the lies of the media and whatever platform I have until they yank me off of this one, I'm going to pop up somewhere else. Whatever platform I have, I'm going to do that. As long as God gives me a voice and an ability to speak to you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to share truth. And I know that makes some of you mad. Hopefully one day you'll wake up. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this to convince you guys that I'm right. I'm doing this because I want you to wake up. I woke up one day and I haven't been the same since. And I want the same for all of you guys. So thank you for Instagram. Thank you, Facebook, for watching. Uh, I'm so sorry I kept you almost an hour. This audio will be ripped and put onto the podcast. I know you guys are watching from all over the country and all over the world. I appreciate each and every one of you. I will talk to you guys soon. Um, you have my love. I'm praying for you. Pray for Brandon Strzok. Pray for Marjorie Green. Pray for President Trump. Pray for each other, for everyone that is fighting um, a good fight. You guys, we're all in the has. I love you guys, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good night.